Hi, my name is Dr. Stephen Liu. I'm one of the pediatric gastroenterologists at GI Care for Kids in Atlanta, and I'm here to talk to you about gastrojejunostomy tubes, or GJ tubes. GJ tubes are feeding tubes that provide nutrition directly into the small intestine, and they go through the skin and the abdomen, through the stomach, and uh, the tip of the tubes end in the second portion of the small intestine called the jejunum. These tubes provide longer-term access uh, for nutritional therapy compared to tubes that uh, go through the nose, such as an NJ or a nasojejunal tube. Uh, these are typically surgically placed tubes. These tubes are used in patients who typically cannot tolerate nutrition in their stomach. So uh, patients that have poor, poor motility of the stomach, um, who have chronic vomiting or severe reflux so that they can't keep enough nutrition down to gain enough weight, or even patients that have uh, risks of aspiration and um, may aspirate what they vomit. So some advantages of this type of tube are that it allows the child to be fed directly into the small intestine while at the same time allowing for drainage and uh, drainage and venting of uh, secretions and air uh, from the stomach. So typically kids who get fed this way can't vomit the feeds because they're getting fed way into the small intestine and it's very difficult to actually have vomiting from that. It's often used as an alternative to the Nissen fundoplication surgery, which is uh, a surg anti-reflux surgery where the stomach is wrapped around the esophagus and prevents a reflux and vomiting from occurring. Some of the drawbacks of this, uh, of this type of tube are, are the fact that you can't give the formula all at once uh, or as a bolus feed, as we, do, as we call it. Um, formula has to be trickled into the uh, small intestine over a, a longer period of time, or as we call it, as a, a continuous drip of formula. Um, other drawbacks of this tube are that the, the feeding tube can sometimes get clogged with formula, and also if the tube gets misplaced and comes out of the small intestine, it requires an uh, interventional radiologist to replace it. This is not the type of tube that can be replaced at home compared to your standard G-tubes or gastrostomy tubes that go directly into the stomach. I'd like to show you some examples of some gastrojejunostomy tubes. So this is a long uh, GJ tube that uh, is often referred to as a PEG-J tube or a percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy, gastrojejunostomy tube, sorry, or a uh, percutaneous endoscopic gastrojejunostomy tube. This is a typical PEG tube uh, where it's surgically placed with the help of an, a, an endoscopist or a gastroenterologist who has a camera inside the stomach that assists the surgeon. And it hangs out of the body. So uh, all you see is this part um, over the abdomen. And there's this tube that hangs out. And there's a port where you can drain stomach contents or administer medications um, through into the stomach. And then there's a second uh, port that provides a skinnier tube, this yellow tube, as you can see, that goes all the way through and into the stomach. And this area would be in the stomach. And this tube is typically not knotted up like this, but um, it's uh, typically a long, skinny tube that goes all the way into the small intestine. And the formula goes into the uh, small intestine out of this little tip here. And again, by feeding all the way into the small intestine, uh, patients usually cannot throw up the formula and they're able to keep it down and get all the nutrition. So this is a tube that is robust. Uh, it's very difficult to pull out, but it does hang out of the body. This is a different kind of GJ tube. It's uh, called a low profile tube or a button. And uh, this is all you usually see coming out of the patient's body um, over their abdomen. Uh, this is held in place by a, a balloon that can be inflated right here so that it keeps it in place in the stomach. And the rest of this, uh, the rest of this tube uh, goes through the stomach and into the small intestine where the formula comes out. These tubes can be placed by an interventional radiologist or by a gastroenterologist who is performing an endoscopy. Um, the advantages of the radiologist performing it is that typically it does not require anesthesia for the patient, whereas if the, the gastroenterologist performs it endoscopically, the patient does require anesthesia. 
So this port uh, leads into the stomach and it connects uh, to these little holes here that sit in the stomach so that, uh, so that fluids in the stomach or air can be vented out through these holes and out of this port, out of the patient. Also, medications and even feeds can be administered through this port, and they come out these little holes in the stomach if uh, you want to try to feed the patient through the stomach. This is the port to the small intestine, or the jejunal port, and formula that goes in here goes all the way through this long tube, which ends up in the small intestine, so that the formula comes out here at the tip and cannot be vomited. So the advantage of this tube, it's a low profile tube and it doesn't hang out of the body so that this is all that's seen above the abdomen. Um, but one of the drawbacks is that it is held in place by a balloon that can sometimes pop and that means it can get dislodged or pulled a little bit more easily. Um, and if that happens, then uh, notify your physician and usually they'll just ask you to bring the patient in uh, to the hospital so that it can get replaced uh, by an interventional radiologist. So in summary, gastrojejunostomy or GJ tubes are a great way to provide nutrition directly into the small intestine in patients who can't tolerate being fed into the stomach, be it from vomiting or motility issues of the stomach.